Alaska's comic book news from Alaska's comic book shop with Amy Jo, Big Lou, Kevin D, and Shauna. Tune in every week for the latest news about comic books in Alaska's comic book shop. Hey guys, it is Lou and Eric the Red here hey, today. 21. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we can all drink this year. Hey, hey. Yeah, it's the year to drink. That's right. That's right. Hey, what's going on, Bad Spaz? So uh, today we'll be doing the... Uh, uh, We'll announce a giveaway, but we're going to be going through our top 20, top 20 of 2020. Yep. And this is just for what sold at the shop. And this should be an interesting little episode here because this, I have a feeling our top 20 is a lot different <laughs> from your shop's top 20 and hey, uh, uh, where you guys are from. So uh, uh, think, we will know, definitely uh, uh, look at that. You know, Lou, we were talking just before this. I think we should call this the COVID-20. The COVID-20. The COVID-20. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what yeah, last year was all about. So let's just, our top 20 is now the COVID-20. Yes, yes. <laughs> And uh, uh, for those of you guys uh, uh, that don't know about our uh, recent giveaway, uh, our, our giveaway promotion that we just put out, uh, yep. if you just go on on our, on our Instagram, and you'll see it there. And you can and represent. Have, that's right. And all you got to do is represent our gear, and uh, uh, you'll be entered to win an actual signed Scott Campbell and Stan Lee Exclusive variant, which I I will get that right, right here, here, right here. So you'll actually have a chance. You don't want me to drop this. So there you go, win peeps. That right there. So signed, signed. Now that is going to be for the Instagram signed. one. So you need to go to our Instagram and uh, listen to the instru or follow the instructions on our Instagram. Okay, go to our Instagram and you'll be entered to win that bad boy. We'll announce the winner of that giveaway on uh, February 26th. So we look forward to seeing you guys uh, sporting our gear. Sporting our gear, being part of the Aegis, uh, the Spartan Army. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so some quick housekeeping, uh, a special uh, shout out to our one of our sponsors, uh, EGS, Expert Grading Services. That's right. Uh, with uh, Tony Trombetta there, so that you can get your books graded, get those awesome uh, labels, uh, transparent and pretty much uh, probably one of the more thorough uh, gradings you're going to get it in. Customized labeling. Oh, That's right. Awesome. Matches really well. He does a great job with the colors to make these labels unique. Yeah, so make sure that you guys check him out at EGS grade, uh, uh, EGS uh, Comics grading com, and a link to his website is in the description below. Also, a special, special thanks to all our Patreon that help us uh, keep this one going. Yeah. And for those of you that uh, uh, haven't checked out our Patreon yet, uh, it's worthwhile. Uh, aside from it helping out the channel and helping out the shop, it gives you deeper uh, discounts on books. So uh, and everybody loves a discount. And everybody loves. Everybody a loves a discount. Everybody loves a discount. So is, well, that, is that like our, our stimulus? Yeah, that's right. It's it's ten percent stimulus. That's right. It, 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 exactly. And Patreon receive a uh, ten percent off all books uh, at the shop. So uh, the other thing is, we just launched a slab section on our website. Yeah. So make sure you guys check that out as well. And then uh, uh, we still have our GoFundMe going. And uh, let's what, what's what's about that GoFundMe? I mean, what's you know, real the, quick. The the, the the GoFundMe is literally to help us move the shop downstairs where we'll be accessible uh, for some of our physically challenged customers. Yeah. And that's the big thing. We're not pocketing any of that money. All that money is going into moving all of this. Yeah, this downstairs. is only a small portion yeah. that you guys see here. You guys so. have seen the shop, uh, at least in our videos and stuff. And we're trying to move all of this downstairs, renovate, make sure that it's accessible to uh, our, our, our people like uh, Austin and uh, everybody else. So we're really uh, uh, appreciative of you guys that are uh, 
have been supporting us yes. thus far. I mean, yeah. geez, and the cool thing is, I mean, we, we loved it. I mean, this is your comic book store, right? We call it Alaska's greatest. Yes. And you know, but it is really yours. And it's like, you know, if we can move, we got lots of ideas, you know, to, to make this place yours and we welcome, you know, any help with that. And we're, there's, there's three comic book shops in Alaska, but we <laughs> boast that we're like the realest, we are. We're, we're the, we're the real. realest comic <laughs> shop. You know, we, we don't do any gaming or anything here at the shop. It's just strictly comic books. Uh, we have our neighbor downstairs that takes care of the gaming for us. So we uh, uh, appreciate anything and everything you can do to help us out. What's going on, Austin? So uh, I'm thinking we'll knock out the giveaway real quick. Oh, all right. All right. There's a reminder what that is. And that was for that, uh, uh, that Gotham City Sirens. So we will uh, run through the randomizer real quick. Da, 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 da. Okay, yes. would you get a drum roll or anything on that? Yeah, we'll do the uh, screen share here real quick. Uh, <laughs> make sure. Uh, okay, screen share. We, we don't do ping pong balls anymore. Not, we're not doing it with the ping pong balls back. We okay, should. So is that a Gen X thing? Yeah, that's a Gen X. <laughs> that's a Gen X thing. All right. All right, <laughs> all right so here we go. We're going to knock out this bad boy here real quick. And. Yeah, we'll just do it like this. That way we get all of them. And well, actually, no, we gotta do. Uh, here, let's give this a shot here. How many we got? We got seven comments. Let's go. Cyborg Dad mystery. Cyborg Dad. Okay. Uh, actually. Uh, he's disqualified because he didn't say the key word, which was dumpster fire. He basically just tagged his uh, his business in there, which we appreciate. Uh, that's and all, okay. But he's disqualified, so let's move on. Rules, let's rules. See. Rules are the rules. Michael, Michael Yim. Yim. Michael Yim. Yim. Whoop, whoop. Michael Yim. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe we should actually get a better thing than that. <laughs> so, uh, Michael Yim, you are the winner. Congratulations well to done. Michael. Well done, you get. Dun, dun, dun. So, Michael Yim, you win. That's right. Hit them likes, y'all. Yeah. Go. So, let's uh, go back to the main page here. Starting Alaska's again? Clear. There we go. Here hey, we're we back. back. I'm, I'm getting quick on the draw there. Hey, uh, we're not, it's only two days in. We're yeah, only yeah, two days only in, Only three right? days in to do here. So, all right, guys. So, we got our winner for that. Yeah. And Congratulations, Mike. Congratulations, Mike. Mike, we know how to get a hold of you. I, I have your address, so congratulations. We'll send that out to you there. And uh, all right, let's go through this top 20 here real quick. Uh, now, these are the top 20 of the store, right? So, this so, is, yeah, so this then, is what you all, over the course of the whole year, this is the top 20 purchases here. Right. So let's see here where we at. Oh, so that's work. All right. All right, guys. So this is our top 20 of 2020 at this shop. And I'd love to hear, to see your comments in yeah, the live please. chat, you know, compared to what happened <laughs> at your shop and your personal list. There you go. All there right. Go. So let's take a look here. This, this is where all the debates start. This, this is, is where like, the debate starts. Why did you pick that one? No. Now this is Alaska here. So number 20. What a surprise, Venom. Venom Why, 25. Who did not think Venom would be on this list? Exactly. And this I, one, you know, uh, there, Oh, God, people are rushing it. There's so many variants for this book, too. Yep. But uh, our, this was our number 20 for sales by volume at the shop was Venom number 25. Well, he has the big, he had the big story. And it's funny that, you know, Venom in the middle part of the year, despite, you know, the COVID and the pandemic, everybody was kind of like, this seemed like the filler stories waiting for the null, the king of, you know, the king in black storyline to come out toward the end. That's right. But even so, he still had some really good issues. And I think it was the, the variant cover craze was really high during this year. So. Oh, it was out of control. There, uh, I think there's, uh, if you go to League of Comic Geeks, there's like 20 different covers for this thing. Yeah. Right? And then on top of that, uh, uh, I mean, yeah, leading into the king in black, you've got, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, Le uh, the king in black. What I love is some of the add-ons. Like, if you guys haven't purchased and read that Doctor Doom Iron Man yet, mm -hmm. what a phenomenal little story in there. Because, I mean, there's some goofiness about... I'll give you just one spoiler, but hell, it's on the cover. Santa Claus gets uh, <laughs> Venomized. Well, well, we're getting to a big comics, man. We're, 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 we're getting there. We'll get there. Uh, we're going from 20 backwards. So, uh, But, 
Yeah, that that Doctor Doom and uh, yes. uh, Iron Man. That was it's, got some hints. Yeah, in there. Santa, Santa Claus is nullifying. They got to deal with it, but you get to see that mutual respect that uh, Doctor Doom and Tony Stark have for each other. So Which I is thought that was really cool. pretty cool. Yeah. So, All right, um, moving on. Number right. nineteen was X Men number nine. X Men number nine. Specifically, this I think it was the cover. This cover, it was the cover. Not sure why. It, you know, there's a lot of throwbacks to it in terms of the costumes. Well, no, you've, you've got Havoc on there. You've yeah. got Scott Summers. You've got uh, uh, Corsair. You've got the Gladiator. You know, yeah, I mean, and, they're on there. And I think this was a, a a nod to one of the most successful uh, successful <laughs> storylines in uh, X Men, which was when they went out in space. True, and met Charles the Shi'ar. Xavier. Yeah, they met the Shi'ar. Uh, uh, Professor X was able to walk during that time. All true, this stuff. So true. I think that I think that was a nod to that, and it's just a classic cover. And that was actually a uh, high selling poster at the shop too. So I thought that that was pretty. <laughs> and then uh, we've got number, number eighteen. 18. No, interesting. Second this, print. Second print. Second print made the top twenty. Now that's kind of interesting. I think a lot of the second print purchases were those who missed the first. That's right. That's you know, exactly what it was. And and the the really cool part was that it's this is a throwback, man. This is a generational throwback. The, yes. the, anybody who's been a TMNT fan, you know, Gen Xers and and on, I tell you what, this was this was a huge story. Everybody really kind of jumped on this, and uh, the covers, various so these covers were amazing. There were some really really awesome ones. Oh yeah. But uh, yeah, it's funny that the second print was a high seller because obviously those who didn't get that first, which was really a small run, you know, really wanted to get a piece of it. And what's interesting is that this is all spurred off of incompetence at IDW because <laughs> IDW didn't honor the FOC rules. Right. They literally printed the books and were already sending them out before FOC. Yeah. So no, uh, any shops that had. The they had two to weeks prior, yeah. So the two weeks prior, when you're trying to raise your orders, we missed out. Yeah, yep. and that's why shops didn't get what they ordered. So here we are, second print, and I don't know about your guys' shop. Please make sure to comment uh, uh, down below. But uh, uh, we want to know. Oh yeah, I, I agree. Uh, Someone said we want to know. We want yeah. <laughs> we want to. We want to know. Uh, did your shop receive number two? Because we haven't received number two up here. As a matter of fact, we don't know that no. it's been shipped yet. I issue don't. Two? Issue two, I think, has gotten delayed. I don't know yeah, that it has gotten, I don't think it has come out yet. Yeah, so it, 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 uh, we don't even think that that thing's out yet. So here we are, number 18, second print. So moving on, 17, Wolverine, number, number three. three. And this now, is the Wolverine DX. This is the Wolverine DX. Now, what is interesting is this actually made my top ten for the year. Though yeah. in... As many of you have heard me talk about, for me, it's it's a combination. What makes a great book for me is the story and the art. It's got to be both, you know. Right. The coloring, the inking, the, the the artwork, but matched with a great story. Um, I have I'll, I'll 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 go out there and make the admission, you know, Wolverine was never my favorite character. You know, I, I, I know I think I feel like I've just said something that you know, oh my God, he's going to be burned at the stake. But honestly, I didn't want to pick this one up. This story really hooked me, and I know it's a lot of thrash, you know, flashbacks to a lot of Wolverine's history. But you know, right off the bat, within like two, three issues, they pulled in Omega Red, which happened to be one of my favorite, you know, one of my favorite characters. And you know, this has been a great run all around. So oh, yeah. this actually weighed one of my top ten. Yeah. So Wolverine number three, yeah, great book, and I I think it's been. A, a decent run with it. The D the Dawn of X stuff, I think, has been rubbing people a little wrong. Yeah, but because uh, they they spend, it, it seems like you get a couple of those pages spent on how, they're, you know, how uh, uh, what's his name uh, tries to explain everything. What's happening. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, moving on. All right, moving on. Seventeen or sixteen. Number sixteen. This is I. I thought this was gonna be our number one. Honestly, I'm surprised. Although uh, you know, it didn't it didn't crack my top twenty. Or I'm sorry, it made my top twenty, but not my top ten. But this has been a great story, and I honestly feel like the hype behind this was very little. This yeah. was one of those, and I feel a lot of Boom Studios stories have been that way. Boom has been a pretty great publisher from my mind. But this, we only find them when they're dead. Great concept. They have awesome splash pages yes. in there. The fact that the hunting the the 
the remnants of these cosmic old gods, gods, cosmic yeah. gods, these giants, which is kind of like the Celestials from Marvel, which right, I thought was right. pretty interesting. But it, it, it is interesting that, you know, obviously there's that story of like, why are we only finding them? At the, why don't we ever? And that's where this has been going. And it hasn't even reached that, you know, conclusion yet. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So maybe we'll go bananas later. All right. We'll see. <laughs> right. See, everybody's already got their debates. Here it is. Number I know y'all are asking. Number 15. There it is. Last one. This was the first print, though. And this one, you know, um, <clears throat> this is this is the one that absolutely if you have this book, you should be holding on to that first to that first print clearly because it's such a low print run mm -hmm. and it's a low print run due to incompetence by the publisher it has nothing to do with anything as a matter of fact a behind the scenes thing with us uh without revealing too much we've been investigating doing another uh variant cover mm -hmm. and idw at this point has frozen all that stuff while they're restructuring at uh at their yeah. headquarters level, so which is sad because uh, I think IDW was one of the you know better story. The publish yeah. the stories coming from IDW were really pretty were really pretty good. It's interesting too that there's talk about there's well not talk it already there's a director's cut edition of this book mm. which will have Kirkman in for, you know uh, drawing pages in, right. in it you know it's like his line art and stuff where he was his concept arts and stuff that were in there with notes so that's actually kind of neat that it's again. Popular story, you know, mm -hmm. it's a great story. It's just wish the publishers and the shipping could get their stuff together a little better. That's right. That's All right, right, moving on. All right, moving on. Uh, Wolverine, Wolverine number one. Yeah, this was the first. This was the start. This of the it. first one, and this is the start of it. And this one blew up at the shop, and I knew I knew it was going to blow up because you have all your hardcore fans, yeah. Yeah. and then you have the new fans that want to know. A little more about Wolverine both. because of the movies, but for the hard, uh, this grabbed both audiences. I think yeah. you had your hardcore 1980s, 1970s, 1990s fans mm -hmm. of this character, and then you have all the new car, all the new fans from the recent movies. Well, and I think that's the thing. It's like for those of sour grapes people, you know, the old crusties. You know, it was brought up in the last uh, video you guys posted. It, the conversation. It's like they're not writing for us anymore. No, no, and. Hugh Jackman is the Wolverine of this, you know, this generation. generation. This is what they know. So these, it's these kind of stories, and that they, they're going to tap into that popularity. So there's nothing wrong with them. I mean, just know right. that you got to be open-minded. And I think that's the issue, right? Is uh, uh, you nailed it on the head because we just had this conversation yep. a little while ago, which well, the last video. Yeah, last video. Is, uh, there is one side of it that says, "Hey, these guys need to give us fan service because we're the loyal fans that have been following them since the '70s on." Right. But then you have the other side of the house that's like, "We need new readers." They do, and they stopped yep. writing for us ten years ago. Is the is the idea? So I don't know what you guys feel about but that. Pipe but, up uh, if we, we're always yeah, interested. Pipe up. So uh, uh, let, let's. Uh, so Wolverine number one. I think this was. A no-brainer that this would end this up in any it. shop's top twenty, any Ooh. shop's top twenty, specifically ours. So, oh, uh, um, and then it's just funny like you say that. It's funny you say that, Joseph. Look at this, Thor. <clears throat> he makes it number thirteen. So this, number seven, and this was right after a major, major event. event, major event, and this concludes the the, the cliffhanger. Arc. The cliffhanger in the last page of this is That's also right. a major major event. That's One right. of the things. This is another one that made my top ten. You know, again, I'm not talking about the individual issue. For me, the Thor mm -hmm. story was the top, you know, kind of one of the better stories of this year. So my, my top ten usually relates to the, the stories, not just individual issues. And this issue was <clears throat> particularly revealing. It was awesome. Hey, guys, if you can guess what our number one issue was at the shop, Tony is going to give you a free grading, title and number. But you got to do it before we reach before we reach it. number one. So we're going to look at, we'll, when we get to number two, we're we'll going to pause chat. and we'll see. Oh, All yeah. right. So let's see here. So we got number 13, Thor number seven. That cover alone. That cover is intriguing. I mean, because it makes, it gives the impression as all, everyone can see. It's like, where's Thor's hand in it? It's not. And for those of you that have been living under a rock at this point, you know, <laughs> Thor had the power cosmic. Yes. Plus the Odin, the, the Odin power. Yep. The all father power. So he... He's essentially one of the most powerful beings in the Marvel universe. But they were hinting this that point. this hammer was becoming too more you know, difficult for him to wield. That's right. It was he was feeling that it was getting heavy. So the fact that it, you know obviously this cover <clears throat> really hints at something. And again, mm -hmm. this issue literally followed the big issue prior, and it managed to stay 
relevant. It was it kind of topped, if not you know, equaled the reveal from the previous issue. So definitely a good issue. So guys, we are at number thirteen right now. Yep. Tony from EGS will give a free grading if anyone can get it right. Guess number one, the title and number. All but right. you only got a couple of minutes to do that. All right. Oh, you think something is killing the children? Well, let's see. Let's... Oh, someone putting out the Dark oh. Knight in there. All right, well, let's, right, see. let's see. Okay, let's move. Uh... <laughs> Strange Academy, all right. Ooh, okay. All right, let's take a look. We're in number 12. Number 12, Batman 99. Now, you'll speak to this, because I... Yeah. Why, why was this one such a huge this, deal? Because this is, at this point, uh, the end, you're coming up to the end of the Joker War. This is the first time Nightwing gets to come back. From uh, his memory loss mm -hmm. after being shot in the head by Joker, <laughs> and, uh, uh, and and uh, spoilers in the Joker War, there's a lot of headshots. There's a lot of headshots. So yeah, throat slashed headshots in uh, Joker War. Um, I, you know, I. I'm gonna, I know a lot of people just may disagree, but I think Tinian did a fantastic job. In yeah, this, I, he know. didn't beat it. I don't think he wrote these in, or I'm say phoned these in. So yeah, and, and uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, 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 Jimenez, Jorge Jimenez, the artist for primary artist for this. He killed it. Yeah, absolutely slayed it. All right, so this is a return of Nightwing. And that's yeah, kind uh, of uh, yeah, and then basically the wrap up to where. Uh, Batman calls on the Bat family to fight back against the Joker. Okay. So for those of you that haven't been following Batman, Batman uh, has lost all of his money at this point. He's fighting everything old school <laughs> from the street. You know, he, uh, he, uh, he he's basically fighting. Uh, he's defending Gotham with the six hundred dollars stimulus check. So that's all he's got. That's you know, all. That's all yeah. he's got left. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. Number eleven. Speed metal, specifically the speed metal issue. Yes, it, I know why it, this one did extremely well because this book actually made it canon and official who the fastest Flash was. Right, and was, that was that was it. Made it canon. It, it, this was the it, moment it where it's like canon. everybody debated it for decades. Right, it's like you know Wally West, who, you know, right. All of the, who's the fastest? Well, this one finally. Not only do you learn who the fastest is, you get that acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, uh, from who we thought might have been, you know, there's the tiebreaker's done. All right. We resolved. Well, we resolved that. Person, so, so no longer, no longer can nerds around the world debate. There was probably, I, mean, I can imagine when this came out, there was like, as Star Wars says, you know, there was a collect a great sigh from as if a thousand voices were suddenly silenced. Oh yeah. <laughs> now remember, guys, to help you with the guess, this is based off of sales. Sales at our shop, at Alaska's yes. comic book shop. This is not national or or uh, worldwide trends, okay? Right, right. This is just at our shop. Okay, so, number 10. Number 10. Batman, Batman 96. 96. And this was the part two to that Joker War. And I believe what was happening in this particular one is, number one, the, the, the Joker War was popping off. People mm -hmm. were feeling it. But in our shop, people jumped into it late. <laughs> oh, you so, think so? They heard about it like the, the, a couple weeks ago. Man, there's this Joker war going on, and right, and so okay, and yeah, I didn't know why this particular this bad issue. boy, and that was it, you know. So that was pretty funny, actually. So, uh, Batman '96, Batman '96 was it, 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 uh, number ten. All right, all right, number, number nine. nine. Oh, Thor's oh, on it again. Uh, Thor. No, Thor. This was Herald of None. This was this, this was epic. This, this he, is. <laughs> Do yourself a favor, get the third, fourth, fifth, whatever, hundred, whatever yeah. or come to the shop, pick up the, the trade. The trade, That yep. covers these first Story six, arc. six or seven issues. I think it's six or seven, yeah. But This is such an awesome issue. Uh, this is where he settles things with Galactus and the Black Winter. That's all I can tell you. Yeah. Yeah, you I hate I hate it. to say it. This is this is one of those cosmic ramification books. Yes. And, you know, this is yes. this is like universe altering in a way. It, it's <laughs> such an awesomely written. This is where Donny Cates led every. He mic dropped everybody with this so. issue. I think. Well, ice he cream quarantine. Negan oh, one shot. Well, let's but, see. But Justin, you got to pick one or the other. You can't do both. You can't do both. One. <laughs> all right. So all right. So let's move here. Batman Number again. Eight. 
This no, was uh, part three, yep. number 97. That's where people are now jumping into the Joke Award. They yeah. want to see what's going on. Because yeah, so we had 96, uh, 97, 99. So it's like yeah. the Joker Award was getting in. I think a lot of the, the increase in sales, particularly for these issues, were. Now, this particular book, uh, 97, uh, it finally resolves whether Alfred was dead or not. Oh, it okay, is, okay. Uh, for those of you, at this point, you guys yeah, you, have to know this. You gotta know this. Yeah. Alfred is dead. Mm -hmm. It's this issue that just confirms what happened in uh, 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 City of Bane, which is Alfred is killed. Okay. That Alfred's dead. Okay. And this this issue confirms to everyone that Tiddy and everyone has accepted in the Tom King run that yeah. Alfred is dead. So now the ramifications from that. So the sure. ramifications of that for sure. So. Uh, All right, Joe, a good pick. Got you down. Okay. Let's see here. Okay, so he chose that. All right. So number, number seven. seven. Okay. Marvel Zombies <laughs> Resurrect. All right. Now, honestly, people, before we talk on this one, I would love to hear why any of you think this book made it. <laughs> this, the, the, the zombie theme. That has been really weird for, for Marvel. I get it, zombies have popularity, but particularly this, I don't understand. I, I, I'm not against it, I just don't understand it. I really think people jumped on this book with a lot of hope. Marvel released this book because they saw the hole that the shut, that the, uh, Termination of the Walking Dead series. Oh, that came shortly after... This came shortly after that. Then. Right. Oh, and they were wait. trying to fill that gap. And the writing and the... I, you you guys judge for yourself. Yeah. As a comic shop owner, I, I shouldn't be... <laughs> I don't have a side. <laughs> I shouldn't have a side. This was not my favorite. <laughs> this was not my favorite yeah, at all. The, the interior of this favorite. was not that great, in my no, opinion. But it, it, again, everybody has their thing, right? This was just a surprise to me. But the, the number one sold like right, number two, and I think number, I think it was a three. It was a limited series. I, I number know, two, uh, all the sales slumped after that. So, uh, I think people just wanted this number one. We were all, all right. we were all feeling the COVID, the pandemic. So oh, here it is, ninety eight. Now it slipped in there between 96, 97. 98 jumps 98. up higher. And, and people were feeling this, you know, with uh, Harley and Punchline. Uh, was it this one where they had their fight? This was. The final Th fight. This was the final fight. This was the final fight between uh, Harley, uh, Harley and, and Punchline. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So this was a really good one. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We'll come up with our predictions for that mm. next time. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, here's another death metal on the, on the uh, list. All right. Number so, three. So number three, Dark Knight's death metal number three. And I believe that this one sold extremely well. Because it had Superman on the cover. cover. And a lot of people that had missed out on one and two at the shop here jumped in on three just to give it a shot. Yeah, and maybe. It is, so it's a, I think it's six or seven issue limit. It's a, no, it's a seven, seven issue, issue limit. Seven issue. The last issue comes out uh, this week, I believe. And we're actually going into uh, uh, Future State this yep. week. So yep. that's what's going to be at the shop this week is Future State. And they're freezing all these tiles. But... Uh, future state are it, supposedly a lot of what you're going to be seeing is future state are the ramifications of what happened in death metal uh, right. seven. So, right. all right, so here we go. Number four, we're in the top five. Juggernaut. Juggernaut. I feel this one made it because it's a character that doesn't didn't get a lot of focus. You know, he's again. Pandemic was happening. People were looking to fill a need. Yeah. They had comic books. I think mm -hmm. the Juggernaut story is an interesting one because it's not one talked about a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you'll hear you know focuses on Cyclops or you know, some of the other characters. Juggernaut's got that concept character, you know, of, of a, a character that can't be stopped. Right. You know, and this was an interesting story. I actually kind of liked the story, um, and mm -hmm. but it's popular. I think it had a lot to do with just a wow. Let's never we've never seen a one shot on Juggernaut. Let's take a look at it. That's so. right, and this, and the story, and this is actually pretty cool. It's a story of redemption. It is because he's not the bad guy. If spoiler, but he's not mm -hmm. the bad guy. This is literally you see a guy trying to well figure out what his role. What his role be. is because he can't he can't get to the island. For those of you who understand the X Men and the thing that's going on with Krakoa, well, Krakoa so, yeah, he's not a mutant. 
Yeah. His powers are magical, so he can't get to the island. What's his role now? What what does he do in society? Exactly. So this was a pretty good story. Yeah, it did have a new character appearance too. Uh, do you remember the name? Just a challenge mm-hmm. to their art chemist. Yeah. So <laughs> let's see. One of our oh, own. Number one three. Of our, no. One of our own. Clearly, no. This is at our shop. Yeah, this was a shop exclusive. End. And this was a shop exclusive, and that was a. Uh, uh, this was the second shop exclusive. That's right. Yeah. So here's your last chance to guess what number one is. Yep. First person to post it in the uh, uh, live chat. Tony will decide this. I'm um, not deciding. You're anything. not going to decide this. All right, no. Tony will decide it. <laughs> All right. All right. So yeah, you're was, right, Azores. That was it is a fire cover. I mean, this is one of those. Correct me if I'm wrong. There's a lot Alaskan in this. You know, yeah, you got you the bear, of course. The bear. You have the polar bear. You have the northern lights. You yep, have Denali. The yep. Denali in the background. And this was something that uh, Amy had a lot of input in. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, she she felt very strongly about what she wanted the cover to look like. So. Yeah, in case y'all didn't realize, Amy's our new spokeswoman. Yes, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> So, uh, here we go here. Number two. Number two. Negan lives. Negan lives. For those of you who are saying it was the Negan one shot, so you may, we still got a number one. Still, we have to wait for the top one, but Negan lives cracked it at number two. So Oh, yeah. This was our, this was, was this a one shot too? This Negan was a lives? one shot. Okay. And, I mean, he could have gone further, but then, of course. They, I think he was priming everyone for the Walking Dead deluxe that yeah. just got released. So. All right, well, here we are. All we right, are so at number one. We are at number one. And I, don't know, number one I don't know, Lou, what do you think? Should we should we reveal the number one? Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do it. We don't want to keep going. people going until number... Until... Bun, dun, dun, dun. Mars dun, dun. Attacks. Absolutely, this was the first shop exclusive, and if I'm not mistaken, the first Alaskan variant exclusive from, variant. From uh, a Dynamite. Yeah. And... As a matter of fact, we've looked around at the other shops. This is the first actual real variant cover. Yeah. Because the other guys, they had like the little Mickey Mouse thank you. It was a it was a picture of uh, of of their customers and staff in oh, front okay. of the shop. Okay. And they called that a variant cover. No, and they called Spi- that a variant. And it was Spider Man. Uh, it was like Spider Man. Uh, I can't even remember which issue number it was, but, but this, this was artwork specifically this was for the shop. Artwork specifically for the shop, and so, awesome. You can you can see you can see the, the you know the shield. They, yep. He incorporated you know Royal incorporated a lot of really cool stuff on this. They got the shield from you know your your theme. You know, the That's theme of the right. Store, the and this is all John Royal here. Yeah, this was one of these ones where uh, we had no input other than hey John. We're Aegis Comics of Alaska. <laughs> this is going to be Alaska's first variant cover. Yeah. Can you hook us up? And this is what he came up with. Dynamite. Uh, they trusted us yeah. with, with, with their brand. And uh, this was the very first variant cover. We, we're looking forward to doing many more in the future. But this was our very first. And who, who can't look at that and, and do the, the sound effects of the Martian? Yeah. Hold, holding the bra going, ah, ah, you know, <laughs> who, who does not think that's funny? <laughs> oh, my God. So, uh, uh. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. That was the first thing when I looked at it. I was like, that's the bra. And then, of course, I made the sound effect of the Martian's attacks. It's a oh, Martian's attack story. Man. Yeah, it... I'm uh, uh, I'm very happy with how this came out and uh, absolutely right. Everyone yeah. needs to get one. Yes, still please. got a few in the shop, I believe, right? Yeah, we still have a and few the web, in the shop the web and on the web store. Yep. So make sure that uh, 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 that you guys uh, consider getting one of these. Please. Art chemist, you're absolutely right. D cell. Yeah, you got it. That's right. Which was a really interesting power. I don't think that that's kind of been incorporated in, in any other character. You know, the deceleration, basically. You know, Juggernaut yeah. can't be stopped once moving. Mm-hmm. What about somebody who can has the opposite effect in physics? Oh yeah, it was a great idea. I like the concept of the character. So that was our uh, uh, our top twenty at the shop. Uh, real quick, if uh, if Tony, you go through, or Tony and Amy and our moderator uh, Shauna. If you can go through the comments and let me know who the winner is and just post the name of the winner, yep. that'd be awesome. And then uh, I'm going to do real quick uh, a quick uh, screen share because I want to show you guys uh, 
Let me see here. That's uh, <laughs> I should have known that from the start. <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> we made some changes to the website because we wanted people to be able to uh, uh, get a hold of some of the more uh, collectible stuff. So we do have graded books now. We actually mm -hmm. have a graded book section on our website. So for those of you guys that are looking to get a hold of that grail, I think we have some of the better prices out there. Yeah. We're definitely more affordable in many cases. So you have uh, uh, a lot of uh, graded books there. And I'm going to be loading more. Uh, it's kind of a daunting thing to <laughs> upload all of these. But we probably have about 150 slab books that are going up there here in the next uh, 72 hours or so. It, it just takes a while for me to get all that stuff up there. And then for those of you... That uh, uh, and then shipping's just fourteen ninety nine. However, if uh, if you purchase anything over seventy five bucks on our website, it's free shipping. All so, right, all right. Uh, and then for those of you that watch the uh, the video on our uh, Instagram, uh, all you have to do is tag us in a photo with you wearing our swag that you <laughs> purchase from our swag shop here. Wear we, our colors. Wear our, our colors. colors. That's right. This is represent our, represent our colors. And the whole reason is this, for this... Is this A? Is this how we do A for... for yes. A? I, I, don't know, I don't know how to do the finger things. I'm not hey, like, hey, hey, you can cause a war! <laughs> so, uh, guys, if you if you go to the Teespring site that we created, we went with Teespring because we were using Printful to fulfill our orders. And these guys are taking two to three months to fulfill orders sometimes, which is unacceptable. So now you can just go to our Teespring site and get a hold of... a. Uh, uh, our collection there, including the the very famous the very famous put that in my box shirt, and then uh, Amy uh, insisted that we have leggings, so we have leggings. Brand new uh, to the store, actually. Yeah. Brand so, new to the store. So, so. so I'm hoping uh, uh, Roger will appreciate that. And <laughs> so uh, uh, that's what we have there. Um, Homies throw no gangs. Hey, I'm doing my best. You know, I'm, I, I'm not sure if I can though. <laughs> I don't have the right complexion, possibly. I'm not sure. Hey, I'm working on him. I, uh, uh, he, uh, he's my pigmentally impaired brother, so I gotta hook him up. Hey, say. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I, I gotta teach all these guys Spanish and everything. It's out of control right now. I'm, I'm, my Spanish is limited to you know Taco Grande. And, 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 so, <laughs> with that being said, what was, what was. Um, your top 20. Okay. Well, I'm going to limit it to 10. 10. I'm going to limit it to 10. We're going to look at his top 10. And this was based off of your CLZ app, right? Well, no. The CLZ app is awesome because what it allowed me to do, and I will give a quick glance for everybody, it allows you to actually organize. You can see how much by year, how many issues you have that you collected during that year. So what it did for me, it allowed me to go to basically uh, separate and organize and figure out, okay, these were the ones I got this year. Now, of all these, which ones were my favorite? Now, I didn't right. pick them by individual issue. Um, there were a lot of outstanding individual issues. But for me, when I do a top 10 or like that, I think of what is my best storyline? Because, you know, what is it? Last year was um, we had Sword of the X of Swords. We had the Dylan Brock. We had Death Metal. Um, there were a lot of story arcs, you know, mega events, right? Um, but for me, it's always been the story itself, a combination of story, artwork, cover, you know, the best package all together, right? The complete package. So in no really particular order except for the last I'll hold three. I'll up for you while you yeah, talk. This one, Die. Now, <laughs> it sounds like I just told you guys to do something. No, Die is an interesting, interesting story. For those of you who have any RPG or tabletop background, you got to look at this. This is an awesome concept. It is what would happen if role-playing gamers got sucked into a game that had real-world consequences. I mean, this is amazing. This is like, you really all pretend, but in this, this takes the story of these guys actually magically get into a game and have to do things with dice. Great idea, great story. I loved it. Can't recommend it enough. If you like RPGs, definitely need to be picking this up. Next, and I thought this was appropriate for, for the pandemic we were going through, Undiscovered Country. This is an amazing story. It, the whole thing starts out with, right away, it tells you that the United States has walled itself off from the rest of the world for like 50 years. Nobody's been able to get in. And so now they're trying to, they, they finally let one group of people into the country. And this is their path through that country. And it's a really amazing story. Um, 
the artwork is fantastic, but I tell you what, for a reader of science fiction, and you want to see what would be the alternate universe if the if the United States did close itself off, what would be going on inside the border separating from everything? And I thought that was interesting with the pandemic and all the closing down of all that stuff. This was a great story. Can't recommend it enough. Now, the big one this year, I think everybody kind of has heard about Firepower. Um, definitely the story, the individual comics are great, but if you can, pick up this prelude. The prelude is an amazing story. It sets up the stuff that goes into the ongoing series. But Robert Kirkman's story, his the artwork in this is fantastic. Um, again, I would you know just as a trade alone, this is worth the read. Even if you don't want to do the continuing story, this is a great book. Now we're getting into my top four. This one, Finger Guns. I know I'm picking all the weird titles. If you haven't figured out, I'm more of the indie guy than than the big two. But Finger Guns. Amazing, amazing delving into how people emotionally deal with each other, how people deal with separation. Again, based on last year's pandemic and the shutdowns and everybody's feeling isolated, this was a great concept of two kids discover they have this power to manipulate people's emotions by finger guns. So it's how these two figure out what to do with it and what, how they abuse it, but then how they do something you know, fancy with it later. The, the ending might leave you a little kind of a not what you thought was going to happen, but it was a great ending for the story, so definitely pick it up if you can. Good story. Now we're getting into my top three. Now these are in order. So, Alienated. God, I, could, I was so surprised with this story. Again, last year we all had that separation. This is a great concept piece regarding that. You know, four kids, loners in life, isolating themselves in school. They kind of are they people who stand off to the side of the room, but they come in contact with this alien that creates a telepathic link before the, between the four of them. So now, in their isolation, they actually have found a group of people in themselves that they can get along with. So, great concept piece, great story. Recommend it to anybody who's interested in science fiction. Again, you, you could tell a lot of 2020s dealt with a lot of isolation stories, and I really did appreciate that for what everybody was going through in the world. La next one, Red Mother. If you're a fan of Horror, if you're a fan of science fiction, Red Mother is an amazing piece. This had people saying, oh, it's too slow. People gave up after reading the first couple issues. And yeah, the development of the story is rather slow-paced. But boy, the payoff, they've on, they're on issue five, I believe, right now. And that's really been picked up. So this is definitely a worthwhile piece. You know, it's about a, a woman who loses an eye in an attack. It, it gets an eye replacement, but then she starts seeing devilish monster creatures and how she deals with that this was a this was a great concept piece and i think it's a great artwork piece if you if you want me you know the, the lines in the art are really nice and clean i mean it's a really well done story so that's my number two now is, is this silent lou yeah this is silent lou see oh no i uh <laughs> I, i'm really uh uh moved by uh uh our boy here from uh Gui from, uh, uh, and I know I'm saying it wrong oh, because yeah. I believe it's Hui, right? It's the way it's pronounced in, in, uh, in, um, in Portuguese. If I'm pronouncing it wrong, I apologize. But I really appreciate that. Email us your address yeah. and your name, and uh, we're going to hook you up, man. Uh, I know uh, things can be tough down there in Brazil. So let me, let me put our email address up here real quick. And uh, yeah, this go is ahead. awesome. Hey, so email us and Mr. Batista, he email us and Amy and I, and I'll hit you up as sure, well. Yeah. And we're gonna send you a couple of free books to help you, you know, learning your English yeah. and hopefully uh, to share some love from Alaska to you, man. So Absolutely, we appreciate that, man. We appreciate that. Uh, I, yeah. I, so anyway, we'll, we'll just well, this is, that's that, a great man. transition because yeah. this this last book, my top book of 2020, um, and it's an ongoing series, so you can still jump into it, had a lot to do with understanding English literature. Um, I I was blown away by the color. I was blown away by the artwork. I was floored by the storyline. If you have, are you a fan of King Arthur? If you're a fan of old English literature, you have you're sleeping if you've missed this book. This is a fantastic story. Open, open up, Lou. Let them see the inside artwork. The coloring on this is impressive. 
you you really cannot I've not found a better color you know artist and color inker than in a long time these the colors just jump off the page and it's a it's not the King Arthur that you think the good guy King Arthur story of the round Knights of the round table sword in the stone this really does delve a lot into English. Now, t- now talk to them about uh, oh the grandmother. Grandma. Oh the grandmother is the coolest character in the book. Uh, this is her, and that's her grandson. Okay, the grandmother. Um, you you first meet her. She's in a rest home, and you know monsters are. They've discovered a sword, and, and things start to unfold. It turns out the grandmother was a former vampire hunter. Oh damn! Uh, and the grandson has no clue what's going on, but she ropes him in. And then the story just kicks off from there. And the grandmother, snarky, I mean, her lines are hilarious. The sarcasm, it's just dripping. You gotta, you, her character is the best character I've, I've seen in a long, long time. So definitely, if you're a fan of English literature, if you like phenomenal artwork, do pick this up. There's already two trades out right now for it. The story's still ongoing. I, I can't recommend it enough. So that's my top book for 2020. Once in future. And I... I would argue that these indies have way better, way better uh, uh, covers than some of the main, the top three, uh, top three publishers. If not the covers, but definitely the the, the, the stories. stories. The stories are fantastic. I like for me. I love Marked. Yeah. Okay. I love that all was the, the art That's the tattoo, think, right? Yeah. That's I, a, that's the powers of the tattoos, which yes. is a great concept. We all we've all known about. You know, magical swords, magical potions, magical mm-hmm. powers. Yeah. But tattoos imbued, in, you know, imbued with magic, that's awesome. That is yeah, an awesome it, idea. It, it, I, it's, it's just it, the indies are killing it. They right really now. are. They really They're, are. And, and with, with and, this year, this past year, yeah. the big two having to you know, shut down with, with Diamond shutting down, it's like the indies really picked up the pace. And, and what's your guys' thoughts on that? Yeah. I mean, well, we've got the live chat going. I, you I know, can go on and on, of yeah, course. This, well, yeah, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this because that's what if if DC if AT and T shuts down DC if Future State fails, which we hope it doesn't. No, yeah. But if Future State fails, the we don't know what the numbers are for Wonder Woman right now. Right. If all of it and if the Snyder Cut fails, I think that would be devastating uh, to DC. If DC failed. But All it, we're gonna have is the indies. Yeah, well, uh, can the it, indies can the indies carry Diamond Comics? Can the in, they might they might they don't have the volume. But man, I'll tell you from the perspective of stories because I was a Marvel fanboy, you mm-hmm. know, in the in the in the late eighties, early nineties. I, I identified with the X Men quite a lot. I mean, that was a teenage angst story. It was perfect, right? The outsider group. Um, but as I you know matured and got older, I started turning more towards stories and less angsty mm-hmm. stuff and right, right. i found the indies boom idw vault even image they really have come out swinging the last two years it right. has been impressive the storylines that they are putting out um sometimes i feel like hickman's take has brought has kept marvel relevant right. hickman's take on the and the x-men and the twists that he's done has been amazing but i'll tell you what with the exception of death metal i haven't seen dc's significant event you know, in, in my, my perspective, please chime in if you have any other concepts or ideas, because I feel like DC has been suffering and I really would hate to see them go. Yeah, they, they jumped into the ratio game, but they jumped into that ratio game all kinds of wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, like at first I was singing their praises. I got to be honest, but then it just flopped. I mean, we, we got a lot of those books sitting on our racks right now. Well, I'm excited uh, about Future State. but I, I am excited about Future State. I'm excited about the new Wonder Woman, uh, for sure. And, <laughs> hey, uh, Tiva, we'll go hook you up, man. We will hook you up. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, Tony. You know, I think, I think that could happen, actually. The only problem is... Will Warner Brothers I, give them up? Well, that and... Would they maintain that dark storyline that we've come to love from DC books? Yeah, yeah. Well, especially their their black label line. But I think yeah. the black label line was a great shift mm-hmm. from DC moving it into the adult you know market a little bit more. And I agree, Jason Aaron and Hickman have done a great job. <laughs> Sorry if that was a little loud for everybody. Mm-hmm. But uh, Joshua, I love your comment. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> See, and, and I'm glad y'all you know chiming in because this is really interesting because it's more 
you know, this is our hobby. You know, this is what we love, and we put our dollar to it. We vote with yeah, our dollars. I, I, right? I think I, I think Mark has a point there, uh, yeah. right now anyway. Right. Because there, there is, there's some rumor that keeps circulating. Maybe TiVo uh, will know if, if any of this is valid. But there's a, a rumor circulating that Apple has been looking at purchasing all of it. AT&T, Warner Brothers, the whole thing. Wow. Because Apple launched their streaming service. Yeah. The, what the hell is it called? Apple oh, Plus. Plus. Apple, Apple Plus. Plus. And if they, uh, if they had that catalog, they'd have a lot on yeah. their streaming service. Yeah. And if anybody has the money to purchase AT&T, DirecTV... Warner Brothers and DC Publishing, it would be, I think it would be Apple, but uh, I don't know if that's valid. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's hope so, Lords of the Long Box, because I'll tell you what, yeah. I feel like down the road, you know, dystopian futures, because that's what I like to think about. You know, we're all going to be living under a you know, mousier moon someday. <laughs> yeah, it, it, see, if if Apple purchased AT&T, that, that seems like on the surface would be a great move, because they would now own the shops that sell their product. Oh, yeah. yeah. So. Well, that's our top 20. That's our COVID 20. That was my top 10. Um, chime in, you know, in comments in this video. Let, you, let us know what yours were. We're going to do another one of these next week. It won't be a top 10. It will, we'll, we'll come up with a topic and let you guys know. Um, yep. And if there's a topic you'd like to hear us discuss, you know, obviously drop us a line and let us know what it is. But 2020 uh, is behind us. It's 2021. Good Let's get Lord. drunk. 21. We can yes. do it now. Is 2021 going to be like the hold my beer to 2020? Yeah. <laughs> we, oh, God. So we're trying to uh, reach 1,000. Remember, for 1,000, yeah, we've got some awesome giveaways there for 1,000 yeah. uh, subs. And uh, uh, I think uh, for, uh, uh, for the 1,000 sub, I'll throw in... I'll throw in another book to a, a badass book for one thousand for sure. So uh, uh, maybe, share, maybe, like this video, yeah, yeah, please, get it out there. please make sure to share, like, subscribe, tell tell your mama about us, and, <laughs> tell your grandma about us. Yeah, to tell everybody about us, man, because we are all about this uh, 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 this comic book life here at the shop, and uh, what Jet, you know, what we're, we're giving you guys a heads up. We're gonna be doing a, a couple of. Uh, skits making fun of some of the channels it's all in good fun so uh, uh we, we enjoy we doing some, we have fun yeah so it, we're gonna have some fun with that and hopefully uh uh we'll have some more guests on here soon too as yeah, well absolutely. Uh, I, I think you guys enjoy tony on there we, we're definitely gonna have tony back on and uh maybe uh uh we'll get tivo or somebody uh, there you go. uh on here at one point as well well so. i think i think kevin's gonna have the ongoing uh series with his love of De his deadpool you know, love story too. Sometime down the road. Hey, all you got to do is uh, 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 let me know uh, when, when, and uh, I'll be there, definitely. So, all right, guys. Hey, thank y'all for participating and watching. Thank it you. is really amazing. Um, hope you enjoyed our show. Hope you, you know, enjoyed our picks. Obviously, you know, these were you know my top ten in the stores top twenty sales. So, hope you found yours on there. If not, let us know what you would think it would be. And uh, Amy will be back in another week or so as well. So you, she'll you, be modeling you'll... the leggings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we get her to model the leggings? Yeah, yeah. We'll try to do that. <laughs> <laughs> in case she's still on, I know. <laughs> uh, Doctor Strange. Oh, that should have been in there. Yeah, the, that's you know, Doctor Str the Strange Academy should have been in there. By it the really way. should have. It's a great. great Real story. quick before we leave, uh, I, was it TiVo who was talking about? Uh, um, Damn it! Uh, oh, Midnight Suns. Oh my gosh, the great the Ghost Rider, the great Ghost Rider run back in yeah, the day. Yeah, because Midnight Suns, they, uh, they they're they're talking about there's even a title for Doctor Strange three. Uh, uh, Tales. No, no, it'll be uh, Order uh, Doctor Strange and the Order of the Midnight Suns. I think the Mobius movie has to come out before they're going to do that though, because they're going to want to capitalize on the Mobius. Yeah. If that because Mobius was one of the characters, so that would be great. I mean, the Midnight yeah. Suns was a great storyline. And it's funny that you bring that up, especially since just this week, Vengeance came back. Yeah. And Vengeance was from the Danny Ketch volume, you know, the Ghost Rider volume two run. Um, and it's, it's pretty awesome that they're bringing, mining the 90s now for, for movies. Yeah. So I am, uh, uh, I know we're all excited about yeah, that. Absolutely. Let's see what happens. 
Well, guys, thanks uh, again. And a quick shout out to all of the channels that support us: Lords of the Long Box, Three Men in the Basement, uh, Spine Ticks, which you need to be watching immediately after this video. Uh, Jesus, there's so many damn. <laughs> Reggie collects Gary, very Gary's comics. Uh, make sure that you guys uh, uh, take a look at all the ones that we linked in the description below. And the link for our Teespring is in the uh, description below along with our website. So we hope to see you guys next Saturday, every Saturday at 5.30 Alaska Standard Time. We will be here. You be there. That's right. So you guys take care. Tune in next week. <laughs> <laughs>